Good morning, third grade. Happy Monday and happy last week of school. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Unbelievable. Um, I don't want it to end. Um, I'm really sad if I'm being honest. Um, before we get started for the day, I just want to say how proud I am of every single one of you. Princeton, Harvard, Yale, all of you ladies, um, you have all done an amazing job throughout the school year, um, both when we were in school and also now um, during this time. Um, I am very, very proud and I hope, ladies, that you continue um, to do work and practice over the summertime so that you can really keep working on all those hard skills so that when you move forward and when we return to school that you are ready to go. Um, I hope you ladies have an, an absolutely amazing summer and I um, will miss you all very, very much. Um, and I cannot wait to see you all again in person. Um, I just want to hug you all. It's crazy. Um, but enough of that before I cry. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with our last uh, ELA video of the school year. All right. So today we're going to be talking about theme. And again, it's the same exact thing as in your packet. Um, so this is what it looks like, and it says the learning to target is I can determine the theme of a given text, okay? Now, the theme, remember, is our lesson, our message, what the author wants you to take away, um, excuse me, from the story and wants you to learn, okay? I want you to learn from reading this that you should really be doing work over the summertime. I want you to learn from this that it is bad to bully people, things like that, okay? what I want you to learn, what I want you to take away from the story or whatever it is that we're reading. Um, so some common themes are down here, family, honesty, you know, teamwork, love, stuff like that. Um, again, some other ones over here, equality, your hard work, don't give up on things. Um, and so what you want to ask yourself as we're going through this is, well, what did the characters learn? What were the characters going through? And what did they learn? What did they do? Um, some other things, how did the characters grow or change? In the beginning, they were really close-minded and they didn't want to do anything different. And in the end, they were finally open and they agreed to try fruit, um, whatever it may be. Um, and why did the characters act this way, okay? Um, and so you want to be able to say, I know the theme is this because the text says this. Because remember, we need evidence from the text. We need proof. So that's what that is. So now that we've got that, let's go. Ooh, here it is. <laughs> let's go ahead and read our last story. Um, this is called, if I can scooch this over, my goodness, there we go. Uh, I had a little bit of cut off. This is called Night of the Avalanche, and this is realistic fiction. Um, and I know that that was one that we kind of, um, some of us were having a little bit of difficulty with. Remember, so realistic fiction is that it could happen, and it might seem like it happened, but if I'm telling you it's realistic fiction, and that means it didn't actually happen, but it could. And when we have that versus some other types of fiction, like fantasy, where there's fairies and things like we know that don't exist. So that's a little bit even further of fiction, okay? So we want to make sure that we understand the difference there, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at this story. Make sure you're reading along with me out loud or following along with your eyes, all right? Here we go. Night of the Avalanche. <laughs> the weather can be a mighty force, as I learned last winter. I never knew what an avalanche was until I got caught in one. My sister and I were on vacation in Colorado. We were really excited to go skiing. Living in the desert of Arizona, we had never even seen snow. We are all familiar with snow at this point since we live in New York. But some people have never even seen it. One evening, we were enjoying some hot cocoa by the fireplace. Even though it's really hot out, I kind of want hot cocoa. Anybody else? No, just me? Snowflakes were falling outside the window, and we were happy to be inside. Little did we know that the snow was about to come after us. Suddenly, a large block of snow came rushing down the roof of the cabin. We spilled the hot cocoa on the rug as we ran over to the door. All the snow blocked the door and we couldn't get out. I pushed on the door with all my strength, but it wouldn't budge. 
Even worse, the snow tumbled inside our cabin. I had never felt so cold in my life. I shivered, wrapping a blanket around myself. So as I tried to stay warm, sorry. And here is a picture that shows the snow coming down and blocking the door. Okay. My sister and I went back to the fireplace and grabbed her phone to call for help. But there was no signal in the cabin. My teeth chattered with fear and cold as we thought of a solution. We know from previous um, lessons that I believe I did that solution is a fix to the problem but we couldn't figure out what to do. Thankfully, a neighbor had seen the avalanche and called the police. Soon we were set free from the cabin. I went back to Arizona feeling very small compared to nature. It was also extra friendly to my neighbors after the night of the avalanche. So avalanche is when um, the snow comes tumbling down at a really, really fast pace and um, it's all coming down at once and there's very, very big, big amount of it um, and avalanches are very very dangerous you want to be very careful if you ever go out um where there's a lot of snow like on a mountain or something like that because they can be very dangerous and um they're not always good all right let's get to it let's get to the questions what word best describes the neighbor in the story the neighbor who called the police when the they noticed that there was the avalanche selfish scared surprised or helpful which word best describes the neighbor? Which word, which word? Yeah, I definitely agree. Helpful is the best, right? She's helping them. She's not being selfish, scared, or surprised. She's helping them. Excellent. Oh, which bet? Got tongue twisted there. Which sentence best retells what happens in the story? The main character drinks hot cocoa by the fireplace. A brother and sister get stuck in an avalanche until the neighbor calls the police. A family goes on vacation to Colorado. Or avalanches are big snow slides that can hurt lots of people. Which is the best one to describe everything that just happened here? Which one? Pause the video and answer the question. Um, is the big idea here that the main character is drinking hot cocoa? No, that's just one little part that happens. But that's not the whole story. The whole story is not, she drank the hot cocoa. The cocoa was so hot. She then added some marshmallows. No, right? That's not the whole thing we're talking about here. Um, a family goes on vacation to Colorado. Is that the whole thing? Do we know exactly what happens? No, and also it's just my sister and I. It doesn't really say family, so I don't know if it's the whole family. And yes, avalanches are big snow slides, so that can hurt lots of people. That is a fact, but that doesn't really tell us what happened about the story, right? Because it never mentions the sister and him getting caught in the avalanche, right? This one is very specific because it tells you a brother and a sister get stuck in an avalanche and the neighbor calls the police. That's exactly everything that happens. Those are hitting at all the key points there. Excellent. Haha. <laughs> now, the next question says, how does the narrator, so this is the brother at this point, we now know is a boy, learn that nature can be a mighty force? How does he learn that nature can be very powerful, that it's a mighty force? Um, is it because lots of snow traps him and his sister inside their house? He goes skiing in Colorado, his neighbors are kind and helpful, or he gets stuck in an earthquake? Which one of those show that nature is powerful for the story? Pause and answer the question. Yeah, so it's not an earthquake. We're talking about avalanches, not earthquakes. So make sure you don't get that confused. That might be a, a little misconception there. You might think, oh, yep, earthquake. No, it's an avalanche we're talking about. Um, yes, his neighbors are kind and helpful, but does that have to do with nature? No. Nah. He goes skiing in Colorado. That does have to do with nature, but does it show how nature can be a mighty force? No. Does lots of snow trapping him and his sister inside the house show that nature can be a mighty force? Heck yeah, it does. That's the whole point of the story. That's the whole <laughs> theme. <laughs> the theme. <laughs> right there, ladies. All right, and last one. 
How does the narrator respond after the avalanche? And we're going to choose two of them. He never wants to go outside again. Does he say that? Nah. He's extra friendly to his neighbors? Yeah. I was also extra friendly to my neighbors after the avalanche. And we need one more. He understands that nature has lots of power or he wants to move to Colorado. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Yeah. Nature is very powerful. And that is the theme of our whole story is that nature is a powerful force. You do not want to underestimate nature. Okay. That is the theme. All right. Excellent job. Absolutely fabulous. And that's all I have for you today. Make sure you go ahead and you do your packet. Um, there you got it all right here, ready to go. Um, we got some really great ideas and themes here. Um, some really, really awesome ones. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Um, ladies, again, have a wonderful, wonderful week, a wonderful weekend, a wonderful summer, and I cannot wait to see you all again. All right. Adios, mi amigas.